So we have the we have the IPv6 panel, um, and I'd like to introduce firstly introduce uh, everybody. Um, we have Jan Zorj again uh, from ISOC, um, but Jan is uh, as well as working for ISOC is also was the progenitor of the Go6 lab, which was uh, um, an initiative set up in Slovenia to. Um, to deploy and roll out um, IPv6, and so uh, Slovenia was one of the very early countries um, um, involved in deploying IPv6. We have um, Zaim Ashad, from, um, who's a division head of Rapid Computing, um, which is a division of Cyber Internet Services, um, and so he will, he, um, they have been one of the uh, leading um, organizations in deployment of IPv6 um, within Pakistan. Um, Jawad Raza from the Pakistan Education and Research uh, Network, so the NREN of Pakistan, um, who is a network engineer, is that correct? And then uh, Matsuzaki Yoshinobu, or Maz, um, who is a se senior engineer at the Internet Initiative of Japan, um, and they've been deploying or working, well, deploying IPv6 for uh, many, many years, and he's also a very well-known um, uh, individual around uh, South Asia as well as in the Asia-Pacific region as well. So with that, um, I'd like to kick things off. Um, actually, somebody asked a very, very good question, and I think I'd like to bring that into the first question that we have. Um, but firstly, I would like to um, ask the, the people from Pakistan what's happening with IPv6 in Pakistan but what is taking companies so long um, in, in deploying uh, IPv6 or what do you think are, are, are the issues um, could I ask Saeem to start with that um, sure thank you for the opportunity uh, just a quick introduction um, so the whole IPv6 thing, uh, that was seeded back when the first Sanox session happened in 2006 when uh, people from across the globe flew down to Pakistan and uh, because of these conferences we got to realize that yes, we force running our V6 is something that we want to move towards. Um, I think Pakistan's first announcement of V6 was done back in 2000, August or September 2006. And within a span of a couple of months we had three operators, that would be Cybernet, there's an ISP that was Dancom became link.net and then probably doesn't function anymore, and supernet. So they established a peering as well. So we had a peering going on. Um, then somewhere around 2007, an IPv6 task force was established within Pakistan. So those were the heydays. Everybody was talking about v6. These three operators, they got together. They had a peering connectivity with each other. We had email services, DNS, and some other stuff, web services going on. And uh, then some of the other operators uh, joined in the effort. But then as Aftab pointed out in that graph that you saw, uh, we were talking to the management that, you know, um, we should be listing IPv6 certified as a requirement for the equipment that has to be, uh, that we are ordering, that we'll be ordering in the future. The CPEs that are going to uh, be installed in the customer premises, they should be supporting IPv6. The billing systems and the backend systems that we have, they should be able to take account of v6 addressing and all those requirements. And the first question would come up, we still have V4 and we have not run out of time yet. We do not need to make that investment. And that was not something that, um, that a sentiment that network engineers could override because they are eventually driven by the business needs. And unfortunately, some of the decision makers at the time did not realize where the world was heading. They did realize, of course, that V4 is going to run out, but instead of uh, moving towards a V6 deployment, they chose the path of least resistance, which was to acquire V4 in hordes. Um, APNIC, uh, you just saw the graph, uh, in about a year's time, we, APNIC issued about 2.4 million IPv, IPv4 addresses, and after that there's been nothing. Um, and now there's a particular black market uh, of V4 addresses, so V4s are coming in from other parts of the world. But what has happened is that uh, in Pakistan, unfortunately, that uh, the V6 initiative that took off in 2006-2007, it practically sort of petered out somewhere around 2010. And that's when we see the rise of uh, the telcos and the other operators coming in. And they had CGN devices and other stuff coming in. And they've been pretty happy with them. And hence, uh, you see the disappearance, actually, of uh, V6 addresses from the global advertisement, unfortunately. That's, that's what the scenario today is. OK, thank you. Um, 
Do you know what? I mean, uh, PERN is, is, of course, one of the bigger deployers of IPv6 in Pakistan, so you've taken an initiative to, uh, to deploy IPv6, um, albeit in a limited way. Um, I mean, what are your plans for, for more IPv6 deployment, and what are the, the barriers within your network for, for further um, uh, deployment? Well, thank you very much. Uh, actually, we were very late in uh, starting this initiative in Park, in, in Pern. Actually, we have started this initiative way back to in 2011 and 12, where we have conceived this project um, to deploy IPv6 in the uh, education sector of Pakistan. Uh, we have picked up uh, 11 universities where we have kicked off this project as an IPv6 test based project. But unfortunately, it didn't well very well. Uh, due to, uh, honestly speaking, lack of interest from the Pern side. Actually, we were busy our expanding our own networks, and we have no worries about IPv6. Then in uh, 2014, we have we came back to IPv6, and the, we were uh, we uh, focused very much on IPv6. Uh, currently, uh, over 26 institutes are IPv6 enabled, and we are rolling out smart universities project in 100 universities, and. Uh, Currently, we have uh, moved our 12 institutes to IPv6. Completely, they are IPv6 enabled. And we are focusing much uh, towards uh, these 100 universities. Actually, the major barrier we have received uh, from our universities is the infrastructure. The infrastructure was not good enough. Uh, and uh, you can say the HR capabilities, the human capabilities of deploying IPv6 in their network. Uh, we have assigned them the pool, we have given them the gateway devices, but unfortunately they were didn't able to uh, get, uh, bring IPv6 address to the customer. So that was the challenges we have received, our uh, institutes have received challenges uh, in their domain. Now what HEC is doing, HEC have taken the initiative of uh, deploying in smart infrastructure in the universities and uh, hopefully in 2017 you will be seeing more number of IPv6 because we are targeting uh, 100, 100 institute to be completed in 2017 and 18. So they all will be at IPv6 enabled, uh, hopefully, and uh, we are very much focused towards this project. And as you are seeing, this all around. Okay, thank you. Um, Matt or Jan, do you want to take the next? Uh the next response to that, I guess you can't say too much about what's happening in Pakistan, but I guess you have a lot of knowledge about what are the barriers to, uh, well, I guess, what's taking everyone so long? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I cannot say anything really about Pakistan because I, I don't know your situation here, but I, I have this uh, luck and privilege to travel a lot around the world and, and uh, talk to, to a lot of operators around the world. And I see the same barrier, the same barrier everywhere. It's primarily in, in the heads. It's in your brains. It's, it's the fear of, because you guys are good in IPv4. You know a lot. You know, you know how to troubleshoot. You have experience in IPv4. And IPv6 is something completely new. And, it, and by now you probably realize that you need to unlearn IPv4, because IPv4 way of thinking is getting in your way. You can't deploy IPv6 with IPv4 thinking because you will, you will do it completely wrong and you will have to redo it. So you need to unlearn IPv4, but then you're not very happy with, with unlearning what they're very proud of. But you will have to do it anyway. So, you know, just get over with it and, 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 and start unlearning IPv4 and start learning IPv6. And you have lots of experience. With IPv6, you will have to gain experience. So usually what people do is um, set, up, set up a peering, um, 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 set it up in your, in your, in your uh, I don't know, operational uh, environment, in, uh, set up a lab, start experimenting with it. If you don't start experimenting with it, you will always have this fear of, of unknown, fear of something new. And this is usually, when you, when you get over this, when you set up the first server on IPv6, when you set up the, the first DNS email server, when you, when you set up a firewall, when you see that this is not a rocket science, then you will start enjoying it and you will, you will go all the way to the, to the full implementation. But you need to start somewhere. 
Don't be afraid. Thank you. Mas. Incidentally, before Mads responds, so we, we can open the, question for floor, uh, open the floor for questions. Um, if you have any questions, have a think about it while Mads is talking, um, and we can maybe take some questions after, okay. after Mads. Yeah. Um, as on, like, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know much about the Pakistan IPv6 situation, so let me share uh, our experience in Japan. Um, IAJ started deploy IPv6 about 20 years ago. At that time, we didn't have proper router. So we used a BSD box to implement IPv6 there, as, and uh, we use it as a router. But uh, you don't need such kind of the effort anymore. The current devices support IPv6. Router, your laptop, smartphone, easy. And also, uh, 20 years ago, we didn't have customer, so we decided to use it by ourselves. So we enabled IPv6 at our office first. Our servers, mail servers, web servers, internal printers, we enabled IPv6 for our use. Then we can sell IPv6 for our customers based on such kind of experience, right? And uh, so far, most Japanese ISP are providing IPv6 for customers uh, without any extra fee. But uh, just providing is not enough that I realized, or we realized. Probably we need to uh, provide IPv6 by default. Actually, in Japan, we started such kind of activity last year. By that, last year probably we have, we had about two million new IPv6 users in Japan. And uh, still it's growing, because we are now providing IPv6 by default without um, any customer side configuration. And the customer's equipment, like a PC or computers, they are already supported IPv6. So they use IPv6 without any knowledge. Yeah, they don't care. It's IPv4 or no IPv6. They care about content or communication. So that's from my side. Thank you. Um, there's a few hands up. Um, I'm not, I think, yes, I think so if you were first and mm -hmm. then down here and then we'll take one at the back. Um, go ahead. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, as per the Pakistani perspective is a concern, I'm not undermining the talent and the opportunities we have here. But as a nation, I mean, I personally believe that we are more subjected towards the reactive, as a reactive nation, than a proactive nation. We wait for the things to happen and then we actually start in responding to that, what is that, whatever has happened. But luckily we have uh, good leadership, some vigilant people like sitting on the stage and sitting in the audience as well. So we cope up with that. Unless we become, change our status from reactive to proactive, it's still gonna be a problem. And uh, John, what you said, the process of unlearning the learned things, I think that is the beautification of the whole thing. If we really wanna do that, so we have to keep that box somewhere else, never to look back. And bring back the new, bring back the new boxes question uh, from the so Mr. Zain and the gentleman sitting next to you is how can we actually make this mindset change in our technological sector especially in when it comes to policy de development thank you um, I, I think there's no one right answer to this it's a multifaceted approach as you would like to take it um, there are a lot of good things happening. Uh, we were unable to, let's say, uh, bring IPv6 en masse to Pakistan, but at least we have been talking about it. There have been deployments. Uh, at least, uh, I think, when you look back seven, eight years ago, you would have issues with the operating systems not having v6. Today, you just don't worry about it. If you're connected to, of course, the Sanog Wi-Fi, v6 just works out of the box. So I think with, with the new engineers that are coming on board, V6 already is a part of a lot of network curricula. So um, and a lot of the practices that uh, the older engineers have developed over the years, they're probably going to phase out at some point in time. But V6 is already taking hold, at least in terms of the curricula and understanding. Initiatives such as this, um, 
more talk about it, more labs in the universities, uh, emails to your service providers asking them to have V6 connectivity. Initiatives like IX, which has just happened, I think 27th is the formal inauguration of the Pakistan IX. These are the sort of initiatives that you need to have to encourage uh, adoptions of initiatives such as V6. Um, again, I would go back to the era when there was just not a lot of V6. I mean, the first pairings that we have, they were built on v, uh, GRE tunnels actually to providers in, in, in uh, Europe and in the US because there was no V6 transit available 10 years ago. This is a different situation right now. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of Pakistani content that is being developed and because of the IX that's gonna be there. So I would say, you know, uh, it, it, we've just heard from Pern and how they are encouraging the universities, these leaders of, uh, these network engineers of today and leaders of tomorrow, of course, definitely going to push. And finally, I think uh, market forces, let's, let's just not discount them. Um, Jean, I think, did a very quick calculation of 1.5 sessions. The internet really doesn't work with 1.5 sessions. I think, on average, you'll need probably somewhere 250 to 300 sessions, as we would do in an ISP. So, uh, as, as um, Cybernet is an ISP, we can already see our CGN's training. Apologies for that. We have a CGN. And it's already training under the load. PDCL is already experiencing that. The current response is an easier reaction is putting in more CGNs, but that's not going to cut it eventually. So V6 is the only way forward, and that's what other people are doing. So um, what, from my perspective, what I see, uh, th there's a mindset shift that is happening already. Uh, even at the top management, things are happening. We've run out of V4, thankfully. So it's already going to happen in any case. But just uh, let's just keep having more of these events. Let's talk about Let's talk about more deployments to each other and encourage the service provider industry as well. Please. <coughs> Well, I said that, as Mr. Yon has rightly pointed out, it's the fear we have, uh, the old allies have in their mind of changing the network infrastructure and changing the network topology. Uh, the basic problem is uh, that the human capabilities. If, if we uh, make a decision that we are going to deploy this uh, IPv6 in our network, that there is no way that we, can, we can't do it. We have an examples of uh, of many universities where we have given the uh, IP prefaces, prefaces, and they have just deployed uh, IPv6 in only two computers. They were not uh, giving IPv6 addresses to rest of the universities, and uh, I don't know what was the reason. So we have many examples of that fear and uh, changing the network configuration in uh, many institutes. So once uh, that fear is taken out. I think it's uh, easy for us to uh, adopt uh, this IPv6. Can Omas, you want to say anything? Or we? Mm. Can, can I uh, comment about the different topic? Like uh, the old device that uh, cannot support IPv6. <laughs> so let me talk about the, the, the device that cannot support IPv6. Any software probably have a bug or security hole. So if it's the device is not able to update, probably still have attack vector in other weakness. So you need to mind such kind of situation. And the modern implementation, uh, including the IPv6, uh, that's uh, much better than before. It's getting better. It has a proper authentication, right, accounting, so you need to use the, the, the modern devices as possible, and uh, you need to operate them properly. Should we move to the next question? We'll take the next question. Okay, um, I was also part of the IPv6 project in Pern, um, uh, 2015. Um, basically, the, um, uh, what is missing in the uh, academia is, is the lack of, total lack of awareness that why we use IPv6 in our university. There is no need to, if we are using IPv4 and everything is working fine, so why we use IPv6? So I think there is a lot of work required to bring more awareness, uh, and I believe uh, not awareness, that uh, increase the marketability of uh, IPv6. So if we, we do like uh, um, uh, IPv, like Chinese did uh, in uh, Sunnet 2, that, uh, that they, uh, 
to design IPv6 only applications and IPv6 only networks to introduce to increase the marketability uh, uh, like IPv6 only application then people realize that these applications are IPv6 only so we have to deploy this application in our network our network should support IPv6 to, uh, to uh, uh, open that applications or not so there is a lot of need required to uh, uh, IPv6 applications also so people uh, uh, people use these services uh, and deploy the networks with IPv6. Please do. I thought Jan might have something to say about okay. that. Okay. <laughs> so probably uh, there are many answers, but uh, I, I don't know which are the best one, but uh, my answer would be the cost of the internet. So we do not have enough IPv4 space for the entire people or devices or IOTs, right? Then now we are using that to survive such kind of the situation. So we are paying something else, not for the network functionality, but we are paying for addressing or nothing things in the current internet. And also, as we don't have uh, enough IP space, now the, look at the routing table, it's fragmented and also fragmenting more and that cost the, the, the cost of the, the router memory right so cost is increasing now the beauty of the internet is cheap and the, the useful we need to keep such a kind of the value of the internet so some point uh, we need a new uh, addressing scheme like IPv6 to simplify our network operation, to reduce the cost of the internet. That's my answer. So, okay, thank you, Mars. Mars covered the technical part. I will now cover the sociological part, the the mindset part. Okay. So, how many of you? are using the operating system, I don't know, Linux, Windows, that is 10 years old. Everybody of you is probably upgrading your version of Windows and Linux and everything else to keep up with the latest technology, latest everything. IPv6 is a technology upgrade. It's just a new version of IP. And not deploying IPv6 is the same as using today the 10 years old operating system everywhere. On your routers, on your switches, on your end hosts, on your servers. Who in this room is using 10 years old operating system on your uh, web server? I see no hands and I, I, and I expected that. So why you don't using the latest IP protocol? Ask yourself this. Thank you. I'd like to add something to it. Uh, we just uh, did a rough math and we said there's 220 million IP addresses probably required to serve Pakistan. I think that is nothing compared to the uh, already uh, the revolution that is happening with IoT. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the Internet of Things. One of the things that is happening across Pakistan, and I can speak from experience, is that uh, some of the, the giant FMCGs in Pakistan they're using IoT devices to track the temperature of a lot of things, to track statistics in real time. Because a Raspberry Pi costs about $20, $25, you connect a, GP, or a 3G SIM to it and you have an IP address and you can start tracking things. Um, I can give you an examples of uh, the likes of Engro Foods and a lot of others in every single truck that they have, which is uh, shipping milk and all that sort of stuff. They are tracking all of these temperatures. Uh, a lot of food manufacturers in Pakistan, uh, gourmet being one of them, who are tracking every single uh, sweet and dessert that they ship. Um, they're tracking the temperature, they're tracking uh, the sugar content, they're tracking, I think, uh, certain um, the percentage of bacteria in the yogurt and all that sort of stuff in real time. They're tracking all of that. This is already creating a lot of challenges for service providers. It's already happening. So by saying that uh, you know, we're not doing enough in terms of not learning V6. I can only say to the academia that the engineers that you are producing, and if you produce them with a V4 mentality, that you know you have to conserve IP addresses and you know nothing about 
ULA or, for example, neighbor detection and all that sort of stuff with V6, you are going to have problems at least in terms of employability, and that's a very individual concern. From a service provider, from an employee, that's already a concern, but from an individual perspective, it's a concern. So I think uh, just having that mindset shift of reading actually what's happening in the industry within Pakistan, we're not talking about another country, we're not talking about India, the US, or, or Western Europe. We're talking about something that's already happening in Pakistan, and these are issues that the network providers are already experiencing. Some of these issues, we are just honestly, you know, uh, throwing them under the rug by just uh, using CGNs and some of that stuff. It, this is not something that's going to last, last even more than probably 24 to 36 months. There's a, there's a real crisis happening. It's one of the largest operators. Uh, and look at the number of devices everybody has at their homes. Um, I think everybody has about two to three devices. Every home has about 10 to 15 devices on average now. Cell phones, tablets, uh, internet-connected TVs. So you need those addresses in any case. So to the academia, that's all I would say, you know, you can probably take these as examples to your students and tell them, look, and to your labs as well. Uh, this is something that you would need to do in any case today. Actually, just to, ju <laughs> actually, just to add to that, I actually did a uh, looked on my local uh, local area network in my house, and I have 30 devices using private IP addresses. So it's quite surprising sometimes when you add things up. How much yeah. it is? Uh, did you want to add anything? So, um, um, no, no, no. Okay. Can I okay. Sure. Um, actually, what, there was a question at the back there. Is that still? Do they still want to take that question? That was first, but I see the microphones moved over. So did you want to ask the quest next question? Otherwise, we go there. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Matt. Yeah. Let me just add uh, my personal point of view. So, IPv6 is pr pretty useful for me. Personally, um, I, I enable IPv6 in my home. I measure in the temperature and the humidity and the usage of the power. Also, I enabled IPv6 in my parents' house. It's a mountaintop. It's a rural area. No public water supply, but we have fiber there. Then enabled IPv6. So. I put uh, some camera and uh, say hello. <laughs> Such a kind of com uh, conversation is uh, the, 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 the available through the IPv6. That's my passion to have IPv6. Okay, yeah, I think the gentleman on the right was first, and then maybe the gentleman next to him. Uh, I don't. Uh, I'm uh, not asking any question, and I have an idea, a suggestion to the HEC. Uh, thanks again to the HEC for providing us the opportunity to enable IPv6 at our networks. Basically, HEC is the policy maker and funder to the universities or organizations. HEC being the network operators group provided testbed uh, and they provided gateways and devices to the universities so that they can implement IPv6 on their network. But they didn't follow what happened there. As uh, Mr. Pawad has said, uh, he is right that the uh, university didn't, or the organization, or their customers didn't uh, go further after that IPv6 deployment. So I have an idea that uh, you have people, technical people, uh, their universities, you cannot do each and every job by yourself. Of course, uh, the customers or the university's technical person has to support you and uh, provide you support in deployment of that IPv6 at their networks. There are people who can deploy it and there are people present here who have deployed IPv6 there. Not into one, two or three computers, but they have implemented in the, uh, their labs on their network and they are running it. So why don't, uh, didn't you uh, make a uh, special interest group from that people and they could start initiative, and by the next time we meet here or any, at, at any other place, we will be sharing our experiences and our success stories. Thank you very much. <coughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, we, we are only the service provider, and uh, you can say we are only the facilitator uh, to the HEIs. Uh, and we believe that all the research work has to be done by the universities. But uh, this is not the case in Pakistan. Uh, HEC, uh, what HEC do, we provide them uh, the workspace. We have given the devices. We have given the addresses, prefix, space. Uh, 
but unfortunately uh, there are some uh, you can say our social culture that uh, our universities are not talking to each other they they are doing good work in their own institute but they are not sharing the information with each other uh, some universities have universities have deployed their uh, ip address in their campuses and they are doing good work but they are not sharing that good work in the to the other universities and they are not sharing their uh, uh, what they have done their problem statement and they are not educating uh, to the other universities uh, we have established a test bed uh, we have done couple of meetings uh, with the universities uh, that have deployed ipv6 fawad is already looking at that group ipv6 group and uh, we are uh, what we what we what, what we can do uh, we are forcing that forcing uh, universities and bringing that all institute into a one platform so they can discuss and uh, to see what uh, what went in there and they share their experiences of ipv6 so that was hcc is doing on on the upper hand uh, what we have initiated our own we have started that uh, smart infrastructure project Uh, to all the universities to uh, it, it, if if they are not doing we can uh, bring them to the ipv6 level so of course you provided the equipment you provided the funds you provided uh, you purchased the equipment for them but they are not using that i am uh, of those people who was not were not provided that facility but i opted it myself and i deployed it uh, myself i have requested for the ipv fix from your office and your office was good enough to provide me in that one or two days and i implemented it so uh, my basic suggestion was that uh, please uh, take an initiative make a special interest group and those people who have implemented so you can uh, give them support basically you are the funders you are the donors you are the policy makers uh, you can better uh, lead it from the up front or from the upper uh, layer so that uh, the ipv6 can be deployed and people from the world uh, just like our us fellow and other are saying that we are lagging behind we we have technical expertise we are psychologically prepared for it and we have the mindset ready basically uh, we have to interact as uh, mr fawad you have said that universities or academia or at the universities are do not interacting with each other they are willing to interact but there must be a platform and uh, uh, you can uh, do it better uh, being the policy makers of the university thank you very much sir sir um, you very rightly pointed out about the role of the policy maker but again i would say that Uh, for individual universities who can become centers of excellence in terms of ipv6 regardless of the fact that they are private or public because of the network equipment that you order today it is by default it by default has ipv6 support this is not a decade or even 5 years ago every single cp or linksys wifi or whatever you get has ipv6 support in it so uh, for universities i've said there's absolutely no excuse for building a lab it's just basically free you got to do nothing about it there's not a dollar to be spent it's just part of the existing infrastructure you have if you have a concern just look up rif554 that would be uh, as part of the ict requirements for ipv6 it just basically lists out uh, that you know you got to make sure that network equipment that you're ordering is ipv6 certified or carries the ipv6 certified logo and also you know the second part uh, is the employability of the individuals if a university becomes a center of excellence in terms of ipv6 the industry would recognize that the engineers coming out of this particular computer science program have a better understanding of ipv6 if you want to take an example of this uh, i would just take you to the us harvard is known for its uh, business and economics program while stanford is known for its computer science program An interesting thing is happening right now is that all of the PhDs, the new PhDs in economics, they're moving from Harvard to Stanford because a lot of economics is being done on big data and analytics, and that's what Stanford is very good at, and that's a source of concern for Harvard because they've never had a good computer science program to begin with. So for universities, this this is a competitive advantage already. It's it's an advantage for your students to be investing in IPv6. um and honestly with these events uh, isoc i believe is already here there's the pk nog you can become a part of uh, the pkix initiative is already there on some forums if you can become a part of that there's a lot of ipv6 talk that will be happening in the future become a part of it and you know be the change agent within your organizations within your sphere of influence and you will see those benefits already coming i had something sure i think yeah so 
thank you for mentioning the, the RIPE 554. And as a, as a primary co-author of, of RIPE 554, I need to, I need to say that um, a, a big part of the world globally are requesting IPv6 v6 capabilities based on, on RIPE 554 requirements. And majority of the vendors are implementing IPv6 uh, capabilities into their d devices and their software based on the RIPE 554. So it's free. Find it, find it on the internet. It's a, it's a very good recommendation and help for your pro procurement people when you're buying equipment. Um, it's a template how you request IPv6 um, requirements for your devices and also from your system integrator. Your system integrator who is selling you and installing devices needs to have experience and you are the ones that are voting with your wallets. You have the money, you can vote, right? If, if the system integrator is not does not have experience with IPv6, buy with somebody else. And sooner or later they will, they will understand that they need to learn quickly and gain the experience and help you with, with, with IPv6 deployment. And um, uh, based on the, on the question to, or uh, maybe remark about the platform where you could uh, discuss the IPv6 here in Pakistan, well, you have a brand new PKNOG and this is a brilliant platform where operators come together and, and this can be a very nice first topic of a discussion to bring people together on a PKNOC platform and, and have this discussion and don't look at each other as, as a competitors. Okay, in business you are competitors, but you are all together in this. Help each other. Thank you. Okay. Um there was another question. Um, the gentleman next to you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I have uh, uh, an idea uh, that why not to take it uh, from another perspective. Like the problem is not uh, uh, much technical, but I think it's psychological, right? Uh, each and every one uh, have technology. Uh, we have human resource. We have each and everything which is required uh, to implement IPv6. And uh, still, uh, we uh, are not succeeded to implement it uh, uh, much or uh, whatever it is needed. I think if uh, the initiative is taken by government or by any uh, law enforcement uh, body of a of, of, of country, like in Pakistan, Pakistan Telecommunication Authority can do it. If I take the example of uh, Pakistan uh, Telecom, uh, there were millions of unregistered SIMs, uh, and the government was time and again announcing that please register these SIMs with your names, but nobody was bothering uh, to register it unless and until uh, there was a deadline given to the people that you have uh, to register it uh, in two months or in three months. So each and every person uh, came there, and now in Pakistan, each and every SIM is registered. My idea is that why not uh, the HEC or Pakistan Telecommunication Authority take an initiative and uh, it give instructions to all the, um, the network operator group or the network operators in the country that you have technology, you have human resource, you have each and everything there. So you have two months or three months to implement IPv6 and uh, replace IPv4. Uh, unless and until uh, we have IPv4 in our hands, uh, nobody will bother to uh, come to IPv6 because this is human tendency. Uh, 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 like uh, humans uh, never want experiencing uh, newer things unless and until they need it, right? So if the future is IPv6 and uh, we have to replace IPv4, so why not uh, the government take initiatives uh, and uh, the government uh, implement it? Uh, and uh, so that was my idea. Thank you. Careful what you wish for. <laughs> Careful what you wish for. Um, I've seen many times this going very wrong. Because IPv6 is, again, it's a technology upgrade, right? It's, it's just simple technology refresh. And operators should understand that 
they, you, you just need to implement it and run it in parallel with IPv4 and be done with it. So the best engagements from the governments that I saw in my country and also around the world were that not imposing something top down but maybe go in hand with hand in, hand in hand with for example network operators group in the country where for example in my country what happened was how how we shifted the mindsets of 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 the the high level management people we asked our government and also our regulator for for uh, cooperation with with uh, Go6 Institute and and the, the the IPv6 task force in in, in Slovenia, and how government helped us with, for example, uh, setting up a, a, a panel discussions like this at the NOG meeting, but initiator was the government, and they sent out the invitations to. Uh, uh, CEO of Telecom, uh, CEO of the, the second IXP, uh, CTO of, of these big IXPs, and when they received the, the invitation letter from the government signed by the minister, they could not say no. But all of a sudden what happened was that they said, okay, now I'm invited to this IPv6 panel. I heard something about this. Somebody in the company was talking about this, but I was not listening. And then they ran straight to the technical department and said, hey, can you tell me again about IPv6? I don't want to look stupid because I know nothing about IPv6. Can you tell me again? I will now listen. So we created this with, with just government sending out the invite and making this topic important in, in, in management uh, brain. Um, they started listening why they should Im implement IPv6 and things like this. And the whole thing then started to move. They, they st all of a sudden started to sign off the bills for, for the upgrades and, and, and started to sign off the, the, the uh, training for IPv6 and everything else. Also for the regulator. So in my country it is mandatory if regulator asks the, the, the ISP um, um, uh, if, if regulator asks the ISP uh, some sort of data, I don't know, uh, what are you doing, what are the numbers and things like this, by law they must respond. So regulator sent out quite a substantive IPv6 questionnaire. What are your plans about IPv6? Uh, which circuits you plan to enable on IPv6? Uh, how many users do you plan to enable? Until when? So it's, it, it's, it's quite a substantive uh, uh, XLS file that was later translated into English and used by many other regulators around the world actually to send out to their operators. And that was also another signal in manager's head because whatever comes from the regulator comes to the special uh, ninja departments at, at the ISP that then deals with the regulator, right? And then this shifted the minds in that part of the company. So these people said, oh, even regulator is asking about this. This must be important. We need to go forward with this. Otherwise, you know, we will be left behind and everybody else will do it. We will not do it. So you need to use these little psychological pressures and tricks to shift the mindset and use the power of your government psychologically, do not impose it, because if the government imposes it and says you must enable it, everybody will, will go in defense mode and rebellion mode, oh, and find gazillion excuses why they can't do it. And then if they start finding gazillion of excuses why they can't do it, they will never do it. You block the whole thing. So this is, this is from my side. Okay. I, do you have, uh, we can take, if you have some brief comments, I've been given the signal that lunch is ready, so um, we're standing in the way of lunch, but please. Can I add, if you can I add one some... minute, please? I'm not going to ask a question. Okay. I'm going to take a step and take this initiative to Afghanistan back. I'm part of this beautiful organization, NITPA, National IT Association of Afghanistan. We can all together give free trainings to all associations in Afghanistan, and we can talk with the Ministry of Higher Education in Afghanistan to add this curriculum with, with engineering uh, 
faculty, beside IP version 4, we will have IP version 6. So it's going to have a positive impact on all of them. Thank you. Okay. Uh, would you like to make some comments on um, that point, on all, either of those points? So uh, we've all heard about you know what has happened, what had happened, what's going on. Um, and, and the approaches, and there's not one approach. What I can tell you now is that somebody spoke about the regulator. PTA has been sponsoring and helping the SANOC and ISOC conferences in Pakistan, and the regulator would do as much as they can in their power. Uh, it is up to us, the individuals, the academia, and the industry to come together and get these initiatives going. As far as I can see, there's a lot of stuff that is going right in terms of direction. Uh, there may be a bit more delay, uh, operators will delay, but the way um, internet, mobile internet is exploding in Pakistan, fixed line broadband is also expanding. IPv6 I think, is, is only going to happen uh, probably next year. Let's, let's make it uh, an objective, and I would invite if some of the search providers are out here. Let's just try to um, collaborate on the PKNOC platform and try to have the V6 uh, peering going on amongst us. We did that back uh, in 2006 and 2007. We can do that again. Because of the IX, we are not really plagued by the transit issues. Uh, we can have that stuff up and running. I'm not sure if there's any deployment or upgrade issues anymore. Most of the stuff that you've ordered in the past five years or so is usually IPv6 compatible. In fact, probably would support IPv6 default in any case. So yeah, it's a great time to get started again, to pick the things up where they were left, and you know, just expand on this effort. Well, HEC cannot uh, uh, enforce a policy, uh, enforce all universities to implement IPv6. As you know, it's the only technology update. Uh, if, if we write uh, info, uh, policy to all universities to implement IPv6, the next uh, letter we will be receiving that, okay, we are ready to implement who you need to provide us funding. So HEC is here to facilitate uh, our institute, our uh, researchers, our university researchers, technical uh, members, and uh, we have created our forums, uh, and we are hopeful that uh, we will invite them and uh, to share their ideas, to share their experiences, to help each other, to help out each other. And uh, we are very much hopeful that in the next turn, of, you will be seeing that number could be on very higher side, uh, as we are very much hopeful that we will be able to succeed, uh, successfully implement this IPv6 to all our, at least to all of our, our public institutes in the next couple of years, next year or so. As you would want to make a okay, no final remark from Mayor. So I think unfortunately that's all we have time for. Um, lunch is upon us already. Um, I think we could have gone on and had a lot more discussion, but again, I think you, they will be going to lunch, so you can, can speak to them at lunch and continue the discussion. So, um, sorry, after. Yeah, 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 of course. Um, I would like to thank um, all of the panelists, um, Yan, Zaid, um, Khaled, and, uh, and Maz, mm -hmm. uh, for your participation. And I'd like to thank the audience also for, um, uh, for the very good questions.